right, do it yourself, Bry here, and today we're going to show you guys how to repair uh, your instrument gauges. Um, these GM instrument gauges um, have a faulty step motor in them that causes the gauges to not work correctly. So your speedometer, your fuel gauge, uh, your oil pressure might stick and not work correctly. Um, this is a real common problem on all GM vehicles from 2003 to 2006. Uh, Hummers, the Chevy trucks, uh, this one is out of an 04 uh, Chevy Tahoe that we're repairing. I'm also repairing one out of this um, 05 Buick LeSabre. So the Buicks, the Chevys, the GMCs, the Hummers, uh, it's real common that these stepper motors will fail and the gauges stop working. So I'm going to show you how to fix them. Okay, so a few tools you're going to need. Um, a little hook tool like this is useful, and a few flat-headed screwdrivers of different sizes. Because what we've got to do is we've got to, we've got to separate this instrument cluster apart. And it has little tabs in it that you have to carefully undo without breaking them. There's a few different pieces you just got to go around and, and pry in there and undo these little tabs. Alright, so you also have these torque screws right here that you can have to take out. This is a T15 torque screw head. So I'll take and kind of pry out like that, and then I'll take the screwdriver, kind of use that to hold it from locking back in while you're doing the other ones. Okay, so now that you have this off like that, this just removes off there. I take a little bit of masking tape. And put it right underneath the gauges like that. The reason why I'm doing this is to ensure the accuracy of the gauge we're going to mark where these needles were pointing so we can put them back to the way, the way they were before. Take a little marker, make sure the gauge is all the way down like this because you can move this gauge. So, you know, move it all the way down there like that and line it up. So I can feel this one here is real, real notchy. Stepper motor in there is bad. If they move smooth, then they're usually good, but this one here is kind of real, real sticky. And that's what goes wrong with these is the stepper motor. The little motor that controls these needles goes out. So to be on the safe side, we're going to change all of them. Now what you've got to do is pull these little gauges off the needles. And typically, I'll normally do this with a fork. I couldn't find a fork to pry up on these, so I'm just going to see if I can pull them up with my fingers. What I'm doing here is I'm just pulling straight up. A fork works really well to pry under there, but if you don't have one, this works too. Let 
Okay, so now you've got to take the back off. Put your screwdriver. Kind of pry up on one, pry up on another. Keep holding them up so they don't lock back into place. Kind of pry up carefully around each one of them. Then you just take that off there like that, move this over to the side. Alright, see now you can, you've got these things apart like this. Now as you can see, each one of the gauges here, you have this one here, this one here, this one here, this one here. You pull this off, this is what you're changing is these white stepper motors and a lot of GM vehicles in this year range these things are going bad they go bad on Chevy trucks Tahoe's, Suburbans pretty much all the GM products between somewhere around 03 and 06 there was a real wide range of these things being defective so what we're going to do is we're going to take these out and solder in a new set of stepper motors that are an updated design that are designed not to fail like the old ones did. What you've got to do is you've got to locate where the pins are that solder this thing into place. There's four little needles that come off the off of these on this side. There's one here, one there, one there, and one there. It's best to take a desoldering iron with a little pump on it and, and uh, suck the solder out of each one of those little joints there and then pull it up and out. Okay, so you, as you can see here, I've got plenty of these stepper motors because I've repaired quite a few of these. It's a pretty common problem, so I've ordered quite a few stepper motors in. Um, another thing that sometimes you need is the little bulbs. These will sometimes break or burn out and it's something you can solder in and change there while you have it apart. Alright, so this is what these little updated stepper motors look like. Basically look the same. You can see the number on there is X27. The original ones typically say this XC5. So you can tell they've never been changed before. The X27, ones that say the X27-168, those are the updated stepper motors that you want to put in. This is a desoldering iron. It has a little pump on it. You can pick these up at Radio Shack. Basically, you kind of squeeze this shut, set it down on the solder, and then when you release it, it sucks the solder up into there. Make sure you're locating the correct spot. Put your soldering iron on there. Let it sit. And then suck it out. Do that on all four spots.
Okay, so once you undo the solder, these babies just slide right out of there. All right, so you can see this is the little hole. Each one of them has that little wire that comes out of there. I've got these desoldered. Then basically all I need to do is pull this out forward and it comes out just like that. Then you take your new stepper motor and you put it back in. You can see it has a big notch right there and also a small notch. You can see the hole, the two holes there. Those notches fit down in those holes so you don't clock them wrong. They won't be put in the wrong position because they design it to be able to fit right in those holes. Just push it back into place like that. Okay, so I'm on the last stepper motor that I'm replacing. You can see I've got the new ones all soldered into place here. I'll just show you. You take it and you line it up. Push it through like that. And then I take and kind of bend the little metal tabs in. Make sure the stepper motor is pushed all the way in. And then just kind of bend those little tabs back. That kind of holds it into place a little bit better. Then just take your soldering iron. and dab a little bit of solder on there. You want to do it fairly quickly so you don't heat up the circuit board too much. And you don't need a ton of solder on there. Just a little bit. Okay, so you can see I've got it um, I've got it soldered in there in the four little spots. Just make sure that it's nice and solid. Kind of grab the other end and look at your solder joints and kind of wiggle it from the other side. If you wiggle it and you see one kind of moving in and out, then you need to re-solder it. Okay, so now we need to put the two pieces back together. put it back into place there like that. Grab the back and snap it into place. Line everything up and then just push it down. And everything just kind of snaps back together. Make sure they're all snapped in there good. Now it's time to put your gauges back on the little stepper motors on the needles. So on this one you've got a longer needle and a shorter needle. It's a good idea to pay attention to which ones go where when you're taking it off. This one only has two sizes. It has the larger needles, one for the tack, one for the speedometer, the smaller ones for, for the, the uh, temperature gauges. So basically you just push it back on there. Push it on there like that. It doesn't really matter too much where you put these on at this point.
Okay, now what you've got to do is calibrate the gauges to make sure that they're right. So do a full sweep. You can see how you can push that back and forth. We need to get that lined up there with that line right there. So you kind of got to push it to where it's lined up and it stops on that and then sweep it back, run it back. Just double check that it stops right where your mark is. Do that with each one of them. If you've gone too far one way, you've got to push it all the way back and push on it a little bit further like this on the resistance there. That'll get lined up right. So push that down to the line there, line it up, double check it. This is going to ensure the accuracy of the gauge. Last thing you want to do is put this back together and have them not clocked right. Okay, so we've got those all adjusted. Now you can remove your tape. I prefer to use a masking tape when doing this. And pretty much this procedure is the same on all GM vehicles from 2003 to 2006. Take your front uh, plastic uh, gauge cover, line it back on, snap it into place. Then take your little clips that hold it into place. Put them back in and put the torque screws back in there. with your T15 Torx screwdriver. It's not a bad idea to get a little glass cleaner at this point and a soft cloth and uh, just spray a little bit on your uh, front of your gauge there. Careful not to scrub too hard and just kind of pay attention as you're wiping it to make sure you're not scratching it. Okay, so do it yourself, Bry, and uh, I'm here to help you fix your car, fix your house, fix your stereo, fix whatever it is. I'm here to help you. If you have any questions, comments for me, uh, put them below my videos and I'll get back to you. Oh yeah, and uh, subscribe to my channel so I could show you guys how to fix some more stuff.